Uh, Navy training in Australia. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's the last place I would be in the goddamn Navy is Australia. Oh, my God. What do you have to do to become a Navy SEAL in Australia? You have to stab a great white shark to death? All right. Hey, Bill, just watched at voice clip. I think that voice clip of you on YouTube about how you watched the two weeks in hell thing. I was in the Australian Navy and it was similar, but you got for not keeping your own. I don't know what that means. Preface. This was before the media cared about all genders. We had Big Bertha, which on the second day of recruit school, we were kept up until 2 a.m. and were only allowed a breakfast bar the night before. They woke us up by smashing trash cans in each of our dorms. Right there, I'd be out. I'd be out. Uh, They'd be like, good, you're too weak. And I'd be like, you're right. I'm going to a holiday and I want to thank all of you for protecting me in my eight eight hours sleep. All right. Then we had to run downstairs and carry the rope called Big Bertha, which was the equivalent, oh my God, of the old ship's anchor lines. And we ran for about six kilometers, 3.7 miles. What the fuck? Until we were allowed to have food. After that, anyone that couldn't continue, we were partnered up with and had to carry them and Big Bertha, shaming the people that couldn't continue. Uh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. Dude, were they up on the rope weeping? Did they literally get broken that bad? And we event- when, when we eventually got back to base, we were allowed breakfast and then had to go on with the eight-hour drills and fulfill our duty watches. Wow, dude, that is some psychological breakdown right there. Holy shit. The most fucked up thing about all of this. Hey, wait, dude, did you make it through all of this? Oh, my God. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to be me? Has your girlfriend ever said that to you when you're thinking about that big Bertha march? Um, Was this... Okay, this was in um, 0203, and the Australian Defense Force... Our military, God forbid we seem aggressive, oh, you say defense force, had instituted a policy where females could only be treated or ordered for so many hours a day. So handing AVs dash gas, helicopter fuel, so handling, okay, helicopter fuel was only be performed by men because it caused impotence in women, but also men. But females could hold positions on the, yeah, but they can also make a baby and they know anybody will fuck them. So your dick and your balls are ex- expendable at that point. That's simple math. But females could hold positions on the, the Hilo refuel team. Well, that doesn't make sense. But when it came to actually handling fuel, they get volunteer males to do it. After dealing with shit like being blamed because my ship couldn't get any new workers from land because the ship was a fucking grinder and being in charge of people when I haven't even been promoted, I decided to just start drinking so much I got kicked off, and it was my best decision ever. This is like a great movie. Spent my last year of my contract at a base in a rich part of Sydney, Australia, surfing in the morning and banging a few of the new female sailors that all over 21, he puts in parentheses, that had never been to sea. My proudest moment was when I was awarded the Humanitarian Aid Medal because I built hospitals in Sumatra after the 05 tsunami. I spent days helping and building, and the people of Sumatra were some of the most thankful and kindest people I ever met. What a fucking great story that is. Oh, my God, can you imagine if you quit? Like, how tired you'd have to be, how excruciatingly tired you'd have to be to climb up on that rope and be carried back 3.7 miles. I just have to go mentally with every step. This humiliation is one step closer to being over. What do you say when you get off? Good day, mate. Sorry about that. Yeah. I'm a fucking... Oh, my God. I can't imagine what people said to you on the way back. 